To say that the United States is being invaded by illegal immigrants is an understatement, but we're living in a period of time where certain facts are considered to be hate speech, and the liberal media gaslights their audience, trying to get them to deny their own lying eyes. Not that long ago, we saw over 10,000 Haitians illegally cross into the United States, and just two days after word got out to the Haitian community living in Chile about the open borders and free handouts that the Biden administration is offering anyone who can get here. Remember, during his campaign, Old Joe said that he wanted a huge surge to the border and a non-stop wave of immigrants coming. But the Haitian caravan that came is just the tip of the iceberg. Not only are Muslim communities, but African communities, Asian communities, Hispanic communities. And, and the wave still continues. It's not going to stop. Nor should we want it to stop. The Border Patrol are encountering 2,000 illegals a day every day that cross into the United States. And those are only the ones that they know about. They estimate that two to five times that many are actually coming in. That's up to 10,000 a day, hundreds of thousands a month. Over 20 million illegal aliens have breached our southern border over the last several decades and are currently living in the United States without any fear of being deported, most of which drain financial and social resources, which they don't pay into. But to admit the extent of the illegal alien problem is strictly forbidden. In fact, the term illegal alien is now considered to be hate speech. And to mention the actual numbers that are here, over 20 million of them, that's blasphemy. In 2019, almost 400,000 anchor babies were born in the United States from illegal alien mothers. An anchor baby, meaning an illegal immigrant, has a child that then is automatically granted citizenship because they were born here, thus ensuring the child nor its mother will ever be deported. Over the last several years, there have been millions of them. Flooding the United States with immigrants from third world countries is a primary objective of the globalists because it erodes patriotism, our cultural heritage, and hastens their planned economic collapse, which they look to seize upon to leverage their socialist revolution. During the Democratic presidential debate, for the 2020 election, every single Democrat candidate on the stage raised their hand when asked if they support giving health care to illegal aliens. Beto O'Rourke and Kirsten Gillibrand went so far as to say they want the border wall torn down. You know, would you, if you could, would you take the wall down now? Here. Yes. Like you have a wall. Absolutely. Like knock it down. I'd take the wall and down. And do you think the city, do you think if, this, if there's a referendum here in this city, that would pass? I do. There were reports of migrants waiting and hoping for Donald Trump to lose his re-election bid in 2020, and once Joe Biden was sworn into office, they immediately headed north to illegally enter the U.S. because they knew their chances of getting in and being able to stay would almost be assured, and they were right. The more illegals, the better for Democrats who hope to soon grant them amnesty and make them U.S. citizens and their new voter base, likely destroying any chances Republicans have of winning a national election again for generations. This is all part of the Cloward Piven strategy, which was concocted in the 1960s by a group of political activists who planned to overload the U.S. welfare system in order to usher in socialism and a universal basic income for anyone who doesn't want to work. And who do you think people are going to vote for? Republicans who believe in going to work every day and earning your way in society? Or Democrats who promise the masses free handouts paid for by those of us who do actually work? Alexandria ocasio Cortez. Cortez's draft of the Green New Deal openly called for free money to those unwilling to work. And now because of the free money being given as the result of the coronavirus lockdowns, many businesses had to close because they couldn't even find enough people to come back to work since so many people would rather sit at home and collect unemployment, which in many cases pays more than they would actually make if they actually went to work. Pat Buchanan warned in his 2002 book, The Death of the West, that quote, Uncontrolled immigration threatens to deconstruct the nation we grew up in and convert America into a conglomeration of peoples with almost nothing in common. Not history, heroes, language, culture, faith, or ancestors. He goes on, millions have no desire to learn English or become citizens. America is not their home, Mexico is, and they wish to remain proud Mexicans. They have come here to work, 
rather than assimilate, they create little Tijuanas in US cities, just like Cubans have created a little Havana in Miami. With their own radio and TV stations, newspapers, films, and magazines, the Mexican Americans are creating a Hispanic culture separate and apart from America's larger culture. They are becoming a nation within a nation. Many Latinos actually want to create a new country in the Southwest called Oztlan that would include California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and other states in the region. The name refers to a mythical homeland of the Aztecs, which some Chicanos, Mexicans, want to restore. Mario Abledo, the president of the League of the United Latin American Citizens, once said that, quote, California is going to become a Mexican state. We are going to control all the institutions. If people don't like it, they should leave. Never mind that if California was still part of Mexico, the water wouldn't be safe to drink, but that's a whole other story. On college campuses in the Southwest United States, various Chicano student groups exist to further the cause, including Mecha, the Chicano student movement of Oslan and La Raza, recently renamed to Unidos US. These groups and others are really acting as agents of a foreign government, which means they should have to register with the State Department as such, but it's doubtful that any members of La Raza, Mecha, or any other pro-illegal alien activist groups have or will. For the globalists' plan for their new world order to be complete, first, large regions of the various continents must be merged into unions that act as governing bodies for those countries, and then their different currencies merged into a single unit as well. The European Union and their common currency, the Euro, is a model for the rest of the world. Plans to merge the United States, Canada, and Mexico into the North American Union, which would then use a common currency called the Amero, have been drafted, and the schemers are waiting for the day when they can force their agenda through. Similar regional mergers, such as the Asian Union, the Middle Eastern Union, and the African Union are also in the plan, which would each have their own common currencies as well. And once they are formed, then the final step would be to merge all those regional unions into a single global governing system, along with each of their respective currencies, ultimately forming a one world government in a single digital global currency. Of course, you know what comes next, right? Cash isn't going to be accepted at the major retailers or grocery stores, and you won't be able to buy or sell without your global ID, which could take the form of a quantum tattoo, which consists of micro dots that aren't visible to the human eye, but can be detected by scanners at the checkout stand. You know, I read something like that in an old book once called The Bible. You should probably pick it up sometime and read it if you haven't. Other books you should read are my books, like my latest, Hollywood Propaganda, How TV, Movies, and Music Shape Our Culture. Get it in paperback from Amazon.com or get the Liberal Media Industrial Complex or the True Story of Fake News. Of course, you can download the eBooks from any of the major eBook stores onto your tablet or your phone. And there's a link to the Amazon listings for the paperbacks in the description below. So click it and head on over there and check them out.